Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and it's time for some more Kel Time spoilers. It is the end of an era. Really more than a spoiler video, this is like a funeral. A few videos ago when I was doing my Morite review, I talked about Mistform Ultimus and how that was one of the first decks that I played against um, when I first started playing Commander, and it just really got me excited about the format because it was a card that you would just, you just thought it was a silly card. I mean, it, it just, it's every creature type. Okay, what are you going to do with that? And to see someone play a deck where you took that idea and you made something out of it, something really neat and cool, putting slivers in there, putting, you know, a Zami in there, putting stuff in there so that you could beef up your your mist form ultimus and and i just thought it was the coolest thing ever it's one of the decks that really got me excited about the format unfortunately rip mist form ultimus because um that card is literally obsolete now um the the, the actual spoiler today is orvar the all form he is changeling um so that's every creature type so right out of the gate he and I, I don't even know if they did this on purpose, but he has the exact same casting cost as Mistform Ultimus. He's a 3-3, three, three, just like Mistform Ultimus. And he has the Changeling ability, which essentially is what Mistform Ultimus has, right? So Mistform Ultimus is literally an obsolete card now. And we've seen this a lot with, uh, you know, new cards coming out. But this is the first time we've ever seen it with a commander, I, th I think. This is the first time where you have a commander that there is just a strict upgrade and there is literally zero reason to ever play Mistform Ultimus again. So it's a sad day, but it's it's more, it's it's not just a funeral for Mistform Ultimus. It's more than that. It's, it's, you know, I might be getting ahead of myself, but this might be a funeral for EDH as well. Um, so, and I, I will get to why. First of all, we'll look at Orvar. Like I said, he's basically Mistform Ult Ultimus, except let's tack on a few more abilities on top of that, right? The uh, second ability I'll talk about first, because it's really not that relevant. It really only matters if you discard Orvar out of your hand, so which is not going to really ever happen. Um, certainly, it could happen. Like People can wheel, but Orvar would have to be in your hand, so that's only going to happen if he's in the 99, which he might be. He'll probably be in the 99 of a lot of decks. Um, I, I can think of one deck off the top of my head that... He probably fits in, and I will get to why he fits in. Um, because of his second ability, or his, I guess his first ability, which is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. So this card goes in my Tishana deck, and I've talked about my Tishana deck a, a little bit. Um, so I'll, I'll just give a quick rundown of it. It's basically a blink deck. It is... I love ETB and Blink and all that kind of stuff. I, I've probably made about 12 of those decks. I only have like really two now because I just don't want to do be doing a lot of the same thing. Uh, but my Tishana deck is like a Simic Blink deck. I have lots of creatures, obviously, because Tishana wants to have lots of creatures in play. And then Tishana has an ETB ability. So I I thought, why not make an, uh, a bunch of creatures that have ETB abilities and then play Blink strategy and... It's a great deck. It's one of my best decks. I, I, I have a really high winning percentage with it. This card goes great in there because I am casting lots of ghostly flicker type effects, right? So I have this in play and I have uh, a ghostly flicker, right? I have two other creatures. So let's say I have a Reclamation Sage and I have an Archaeomancer, right? Two cards that I have in that deck. I cast my ghostly flicker targeting my Reclamation Sage, and my Archaeomancer, right? This is something that I would normally do in the deck. I want to blink them both, right? Because I want to get those effects again. And, you know, typically what I would do is I would blink both of those, and then the Archaeomancer, when it comes back into play, is going to get me my Ghostly Flicker back, right? Um, and then I get the Rex Sage trigger essentially for free, and then I can keep doing it again and again, right? I can keep doing the same thing over and over. Uh, Eternal Witness works in the exact same way, right? So with this card in play, though, now what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a copy of one of those cards as well. Now, it doesn't copy both, right? Because it is one or more 
other permanents you control and you're only creating a copy of one of those so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ghostly flicker like i normally would do anyway except instead of getting both of those etbs i'm also getting another one so i can say there's another instant or sorcery i want out of my graveyard so i'll create a copy of my archaeomancer or there's another artifact or enchantment in play that i want off the table so i'll make another i'll make a copy and every spell i cast like that in the deck is just going to get beefed up and, and that's just in the 99 this card, if you actually build your deck around it, is insane because it is any permanent. Again, this is, I said this when I talked about Kodama of the East Tree. They should have said non land permanent on that card. The way they worded it, it's just bananas. They're just opening it up for too much silliness. Um, this card, you can copy your lands. That's what really makes this card silly. So basically, all you need to do is cast any spell that targets a land, just as an example. Uh, Aquatex Will, I think, is one that turns a land into an island. And then I think if you control a merfolk, you get to draw a card. And Orvar is a merfolk because he has Changeling, so you'll get to draw a card. And then you, you get to create a copy of your land, right? So you're going to create a copy of that land. So you're basically ramping for one mana, which is bananas. Like, even green can't do that, right? Orvar allows you to ramp better than green can. What it also allows you to do is just go completely insane. Again, Archaeomancer is the card for this deck. All it has to be is you target your Archaeomancer. So let's say you target your Archaeomancer with uh, Cerulean Wisps, right? You cast Cerulean Wisps on your Archaeomancer. It's going to create a copy. Now the copy is going to resolve first. That copy is going to come into play. So you can't get your Cerulean Wisp back because it's still in the stack. It hasn't gone to the graveyard yet. But you can get something else. Then you can just repeat again. And because you have a card, you have cards like Aquatex Will, you can keep putting islands into play. They're not tapped, so you can use them right away, cast it again, cast it like just a lot of really crazy shenanigans. Very similar to a card I talked about yesterday, Bergy. And I tried to, to, you know, I was trying my best to tone it down and talk about how maybe Bergy isn't that powerful. But, you know, it, you can only take so much. And this is this is why this is sort of a funeral like I was talking about. Um, th this is really, like, they're just piling it on now. This is, you know, like seven, six or seven really busted commanders in this set now. I mean, that usually it's like one or two, you know, that you have to worry about. This is like seven. And they're even monocolored. Like we have insane mono. Bergy is mono red, so you can make an insanely powerful mono red deck. You can make a. You have Varagoth, who is an insanely powerful mono black commander. Turgrid, who is an insanely powerful mono black commander. Uh, you have Turalf, who is a super powerful, and Magda. Both really, you have three, at least three really, really powerful mono red commanders in this set. I mean, that's insane. The, the saddest part about this is Commander Legends just came out a couple of months ago. You know, I, I was talking about the amount of legendary creatures in this set. This is 33 now by my count. 33. Commander 2019, an actual commander set, had 18. 18 legendary creatures new ones in commander 2019 that's it that's a commander set you know they, they, they've just really gone completely bananas with the legendary creatures in these standard sets i mean it's crazy you know and i know commander players get excited about it but it's too much just think about all of the commanders that came out in commander legends 73 new commanders came out in Commander Legends. 73. How many of those have you had a chance to play with? How many of those have you had a chance to build a deck with? You know, and we already have a now 33 more and they're really powerful and people are going to want to use them. Commanders that came out in Commander Legends are already getting buried by these new commanders and they just came out, what, two months ago? It's getting to be too much. And, and there's so many now that that I mean, I'm even going to stay away from the super busted ones. I mean, listen, I'll say this. Orvar, I think, is super busted. This card is so powerful. It's really easy to make. Again, I think I could make an Orvar deck in CEDH, and I would be just fine. It's in blue. I mean, as long as you're playing blue in CEDH, 
you'll be okay because you have counter spells. As long as you have blue, you can survive in CEDH. And with the amount of, of value you can get out of this commander, I honestly think I could win quite a few CEDH games with this commander. Um, Bergy, same thing. I can make a CEDH Bergy deck, no question. I can make it a really good one. A Varagoth CEDH deck, yep, you bet. A, a Tutor on a Stick, no problem. I could make a, a CEDH deck with that, easy. Turgrid, probably, yep, I could probably do that because Turgrid is a, you know, cast one spell, win the game. Right, Turgrid, Turgrid is, and I, I didn't even realize this because there was so many spoilers coming out. I didn't really think about Turgrid that much when I talked about her. I'm like, oh, she's a sacrifice and a discard commander. No, she's way more than that. She is, you know, cast smallpox. Each of your opponents discard a card, and you, that goes into play under your control. Right. Each player sacrifices a creature. Those all go under your play under your control. And each player is going to sacrifice a land. And those all go into play under your control. So for two mana, you're getting three creatures, three lands, and whatever else they discard. That's insane, right? Um, and then you cast something like Death Cloud and it's game. You know, that's it. That's how CEDH works. I, I get my commander out. I cast Death Cloud. And I just win the game. That's it. It's over. Because everyone, all the lands and the creatures that have been sacrificed go into play under my control. And that's it. It's pretty much over from there, right? I talked about Seralf. Seralf was a, a card that when I, I think it was the first card that I reviewed from this set, I thought it was super powerful. And I thought it would be a good CEDH commander. Now, by comparison, I, I, like, I might just make a Seralf deck. I, I'm Morite, same thing. I thought Morite was busted by by comparison, it's not as good as Orvar. Orvar also is a changeling, so you could do all those things in the Orvar deck. And he also has that ridiculous ability. So now I'm probably going to make a Morite deck too. Because by comparison, when I first saw Morite, I thought it was busted. But by comparison to these commanders that have come out in the last week, it's just okay, I guess. You know, I'm just, I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried. I'm concerned. This has been happening for a while now. And people complained, you know, about cards like Muldrotha when they came out, right? Muldrotha just rocketed to the top. Um, you know, Atraxa was the number one commander in the entire format for years. By a wide margin, Muldrotha took the top spot in like six months. Just dethroned Atraxa like nobody's business. And then, just to put an emphasis on how ridiculous things have been the last few years, in o in only a few more months, Golos comes out and then dethrones Muldrotha. Rocketed to the top faster than any other card ever. And so cards like that, Chulain, Yarok, if you go to EDH Rec, and I'm really going on a tangent here, but this, this is sort of, and this really isn't much of a spoiler video, it's more of a you know, my, my overall review of Kaldheim and, and what I think it's doing to the format. So if you go to, to um, EDH Rec and you look at the most popular commanders, right, you have Atraxas still in second place. It's really good. That's why. It's hanging in there because it's super, super good. But you have Golos. You have Maldrotha, right, who is only a couple years old. You have Eureka, uh, who came out in Commander 2018, I believe, right? So that's only a couple years old. Korvald only a, uh, came out just last year, I think. Kenrith just came out last year. Um, you still have Edgar Markov. Again, Edgar Markov, like Atraxa, will always be in the top 10 because they're just really, really good. Um, Yarok just came out in the last couple of years. Alila just came out in the couple, last couple of years. So Korvald, Kenrith, and Alila all from Throne of Eldraine. So that, that's the kind of impact that set had on, on the format. Um, and, and, you know, pretty much all of the, like, top 30 creatures, with a few exceptions, right? There's always going to be Atraxas. There's always going to be Edgar Markovs in there. Uh, Marin is always going to hang on. Marin was number two, by the way. For the longest time, Marin was number two and is now, like, number 12, right? Just, just to give you—and she is so powerful. That was my most hated commander in the entire set for a long time. Now she's nothing, Right? You look at the card right next to her, Niv Mizzet Peron, way better. I'd rather play against a Marin deck any day than a Niv Mizzet deck. Any day, right? Um, you know, Sisse and Chulain, of course. Another Throne of Eldraine card. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. Almost every single card, with the exception of about three or four, is from the last two years. Um, right at the bottom, Brea, <laughs> who, again, was like number three for the longest time. Number three or number four forever has been bounced all the way out. I notice I don't see Omnath on here. Omnath Locus of Rage was 
top five forever, right? And that wasn't, that's an older card. It's been in the, it was in the top five for, is it from when I started playing Commander and for years, and now it's not even on here. I don't even see it. You know, just give you an idea how, how ridiculous things have gotten. Um, it, it's just, I, I don't think that's good for the format, right? And, and I, I don't think that, you know, every single top commander in the, in the format is, has been printed in the last couple of years. And, you know, who cares about all those other ones? And this, you know, this list is going to be completely different now after, after, uh, Kaldheim, I guarantee you three, you're going to have at least three, maybe four of the Kaldheim commanders probably in this top list. I think it's just, the game is changing too. The, the format is changing too fast, too quickly. We're not even getting a chance to enjoy it. It's too much. We already had, you know, I, I, I watched the command zone, uh, you know, year in review. And I don't know, maybe this is like my year in review video then, I guess. Um, it was there was so much commander product in 2020 so much just with the amount of sets they came out with and you know the fact that they came out with two commander specific sets and i mean let's be honest almost every set now is engineered towards commander i mean orvar you think they're making that for standard no no way finn the fang bear you think they're making that card for stand? I mean, how many death touch creatures are there in in standard that you can actually put in this deck? You know, um, if they're not making these cards. You know, I remember Mark Rosewater talking about. You know, people were complaining about the cards in Commander, and Mark Rosewater's like, "Well, we have to make cards for standard first. That's our priority. We have to make. We have to think about standard first when we ever we make a set. You know, a standard set, obviously, right? Not a Commander set." Um, no chance, no chance is that what they're doing. There is no chance they are putting 33 legendary creatures in a standard set because they're thinking about standard. They're thinking about commander, right? That's why they made companions. They made companions because they were thinking about commander and how can we make every other format like commander? I'm just concerned. You know, I, I did my video with Finn and, uh, Bergy yesterday and I tried to you know, bring it back down to earth and talk about how maybe these cards aren't as good as people think they are, but it's really getting out of hand. It, it is really getting to the point now where, like I said, there's probably six or seven what I would consider busted commanders. There is six for sure commanders in this set that I only would want to see in a CEDH game. So what does that say? And, and this even more, and I'm going to keep flogging this dead horse, you know, I think there should be two formats. I think there should be a CEDH format and a casual format. And I think that you should just have commanders that, you know, are CEDH commanders. And then we don't have to worry about it. Then when cards like Jeweled Lotus come out, people don't have to get all in a huff and go crazy. They can just, they can just go, ah, oh, that's going to be a CEDH card. So it doesn't matter. No one's going to play that in casual, right? And all the CEDH players can get all excited. Like I saw CEDH players doing. They were getting excited about Jeweled Lotus. And all the casual players were like, oh, it's horrible, right? Same with these commanders. Instead of people getting upset when they see these new legendary creatures, they can go, oh, well, no one's going to play that in casual, so it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect me, right? You know, because it is becoming the most popular format, it's bringing all, just like me, I used to play Modern all the time. Now I have come in to play Commander, except I'm playing Commander. I'm not playing Commander because it's popular. I'm not playing Commander because I want to play with all these fun cards. I'm playing Commander because I wanted to get away from that, right? I wanted to get away from the super com competitive, super oppressive stuff. And guess what? If I want to play that way, I'll go play CEDH. I'll go play CEDH, and I do. I do play CEDH because it is fun to play like that sometimes, that super competitive style where you're you constantly thinking like every turn you're sitting there scratching your chin like what should I do in, in a casual game you know you're just like eh, just play a spell pass turn who cares right I mean not that you don't want to win of course I want to win but there's not sweat billowing off your brow in, in a casual commander game there shouldn't be at least right like I said it's fun to do that once in a while have that really competitive style um you know for me I like it anyway I'm a competitive guy but I don't want to see that in a casual game, right? So I just really don't like, and I know I'm not the only one. I, I have heard lots of other content creators talking about this, the power level of cards, 
you know, and, and not just that, but also the, the type of players that are coming in who just don't care about having a fun game. They don't care about having a fun kitchen table magic four player game where everyone's enjoying themselves. They just want to win. They're bringing that, that standard or that modern mentality of, no, I just want to crank out a win, crank out a win and get to the next game. That's the, they're bringing that mentality into this format which I don't love. And I don't want to sound elitist and I don't want to sound like I'm gatekeeping. You know, people can do what they want. And it's great if you have a play group and you can you can actually gatekeep and keep people like that out of your play group, you know, but not everybody does, right? And especially in this day and age, it's getting even harder, right? So I'll, I'll end with this. This is a warning to people, okay? This is a warning to anybody who's getting really excited about playing Orvar or who's getting really excited to play about playing Bergy or who's getting really excited about playing Varagoth or who's getting really excited about playing Asika. Don't get too excited. And again, unless you have your own play group and they're okay with that and you know one of you is going to play each of these busted commanders so it all evens out. Okay, if if that's your thing, great. Uh, I'm just going to say though if you're if you're getting really excited about some of these commanders, just be careful, be cautious, because you'll spend all this time and money putting this deck together, and then you'll sit down at a table and people go, oh, he's playing that guy? Get him. And you just won't have fun, and you'll just end up taking the deck apart because you can never enjoy playing the actual deck, right? <sighs> Is it a funeral? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I don't like the direction things have been going. It worries me a little. I love this game. I've been playing for over 20 years. And this, I only play Commander. I, I stopped playing Standard. I stopped playing Modern. Commander is the only format I play now because it is the last bastion. Like I, I think I said in my very first video, for, for people who really enjoy deck building and for people who really enjoy that kitchen table magic that I was used to when I first started playing. So cross your fingers, I guess. Um, Anyway, I do have deck techs coming up, though. Uh, I've actually already made my first one, and, and I'll probably post it right away. I don't know how much more. I think there's maybe one more day of spoilers. I, I kind of wanted to get through all the spoilers before I actually started posting deck techs for this uh, set, but there's so many commanders. I mean, I'm going to have to make at least 10 decks out of this set, which is going to be more than I made with Commander Legends. Crazy to think about that. So, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.